the hosel. I remember this used to be quite common to see junior components offered this way by using the combination counterbore hosel and ferrule. And if you do a lot of repair work, you're going to see that a few of the ProLine OEM heads, such as Callaway and Titleist, will utilize this type of ferrule. Okay. Next up are reducer ferrules. And these are relatively new in the last decade to coincide with the decision of some of the name brand manufacturers to use shafts with larger tip diameters. They're designed to serve double duty. That is, they act as a normal ferrule, but they also have an extended lip that fits down inside the hosel to reduce the diameter. The objective is to be able to use standard sized shafts into a club head with an oversized hosel diameter. These are used exclusively for repair when uh, reshafting a club and not for new club assembly. These are also referred to as bushing ferrules. Replacement adapter ferrules are specific type ferrules used in repair and reshafting of ProLine OEM uh, models. Some of these ferrules will be exclusive to one make and model, such as a Ping G2 fairway wood or a Ping TISI driver. Others might fit a particular brand, such as a model for Callaway that fits many different models within their own line. Some of these specialty ferrules available, available by the component suppliers will offer these to accept 335 shafts rather than 350 that originally came and were offered with the OEM uh, model. Therefore, these can also be considered reducer ferrules as well. Now, if you do a lot of repair, I would suggest to have a couple of each of these on hand. One, they're inexpensive. And, if, and you don't want your customer to have to wait a long time for you to order a piece and order a single piece and have it shipped to you. Also, some of these types of heads I mentioned are, are fairly old, and especially ferrules may be hard, if not impossible, to obtain. And at some point in time, you may be the only person in your local area that's going to be able to repair those clubs correctly. Now, the last two ferrules I'm going to show aren't sold anymore. But you may experience them if you ever uh, work on a wooden wood or need to re-whip one. Uh, this is at least the reason why I want to give them special mention so you'll know what they are. Once available in a variety of sizes to fit the different shaft tip diameters, uh, ferrules for wooden woods are intended to provide a nice smooth transition for the string whipping um, to, to lay against. Um, the, the, the wooden wood ferrules uh, must be filed or sanded uh, down their entire length to provide a nice smooth taper. Now this require, required a lot of work by the, uh, the club maker to make sure that the uh, uh, the ferrule didn't have a step closest to the shaft end. Rather, the club maker had to feather in the, uh, the bottom of the ferrule into the shaft. It's almost a shame that a few of you out there will ever uh, get an opportunity, if any, to just see how much skill was required to do it right. Now, the shanked wood ferrule was a wood ferrule with training wheels, so to speak. Its purpose was similar to the conventional uh, wood, uh, woodhead ferrule, which is to provide a foundation for the string whipping. But the difference was the shank ferrule had a small ledge molded at the top or the small end of the ferrule to provide a starting point for the whipping. Because the small ledge, uh, all the filing or sanding of the shank ferrule was done only at the bottom or the larger end of the ferrule. The shank allowed the first few wraps of the whipping to be installed because, because it provided a place uh, onto which the, the whipping would rest against. And this was favored by beginning club makers. Now that we've explained what a ferrule is and the different types, let's move on, on um, 
to how to install them onto a shaft. Now there's different methods of installing ferrules depending on who taught you. So in, in, instead of teaching the hardware, I'm going to show you the preferred way, which is using a ferrule installation tool. Now there's four basic steps to installing a ferrule, which well, I'm going to describe as twist, tap, force, and drive. The installation of a ferrule begins by twisting the ferrule over the shaft tip by hand with the small end of the ferrule first. Now at this point, the shaft tip should already be abraded um, for the, in, the, the insertion depth plus half the length of the ferrule. It may also help if you have a little epoxy on the shaft tip in order to lubricate it to assist twisting and sliding the ferrule into place. And this will also serve to secure it uh, after the epoxy is fully cured. In the case of taper tip shafts, this is a very simple procedure since the inside diameter of the ferrule is always larger than the tip end of the shaft. And when working with taper tip iron shafts, the ferrule will usually glide up three quarters of an inch without any resistance. Now once the ferrule reaches this point, the club head could be used to push the ferrule into its final position. Just start out by placing the shaft tip into the club's hosel and just lightly tap the, the butt into the uh, club onto the floor while holding the head in one hand and with your other hand about a foot down the shaft. This will force the ferrule up the shaft. And when the shaft bottoms out in the hosel, the ferrule will be installed in its proper place. Uh, just like what's shown in the picture uh, labeled drive on the bottom right. You should be able to hear a difference in the sound uh, once the shaft is bottomed out too. It'll be more like a muted tone instead of a high pitched sound. Now you want to be careful not to dry the ferrule all the way if you're going to be using tip pins for swing weighting. Otherwise you're going to end up driving the ferrule up too high. Now installing ferrules on parallel tip shafts requires a little bit more work because the parallel tip shafts often have one constant diameter for an extended length the ferrule will be much more difficult to start over the tip and push it up the shaft. And to allow the insertion of the shaft into the hosel in order to drive the ferrule in position will require at least a quarter inch of the shaft tip to protrude through the uh, bottom portion of the ferrule before you install it. Generally with metal wood ferrules, they'll slide on easier than parallel tip iron, iron ferrules, so not as much force will be required when installing those. And to help um, the ferrule slide on easier, you could try soaking, uh, soaking them in hot water. And this may help soften them up and potentially make it easier to install. Now, if the ferrule doesn't twist on easily, you can place the butt of the shaft on the floor and then use a rubber mallet to tap the ferrule so that the shaft penetrates through the large end of the ferrule. And in some cases, the ferrule may have to be struck fairly hard with the rubber mallet. But be sure to uh, check the ferrule's alignment um, on the shaft after each blow. If the ferrule isn't straight with respect to the shaft, the ferrule will be damaged and need to be replaced. And if you have a ferrule with trim rings, you need to be extra careful as those trim rings uh, can break off very easily. Now to force the ferrule up further, you can use the head to push the ferrule up. Or you can do this the easy way with a ferrule installation tool. These are either available from component suppliers or homemade using a small block of hardwood with a 3 8 inch uh, hole drilled into it. I'll show you later how you can make your own ferrule installation block at the end of this webinar. To use this tool, the ferrule doesn't need to have to be on the shaft with any of the shaft protruding from the large end. With the ferrule just started on the shaft, position the large end of the ferrule over the hole, or just the appropriate size hole if the, the tool has more than one, like the one pictured here. Then simply push down on the shaft so that it goes through the hole, often sliding up the shaft with very little force. The ferrule installation tool will not position the ferrule precisely uh, to its final point, but it will make installation much easier. Uh, you'll still need to take the club head and slide the shaft into it, 
and tap it on the floor to drive the ferrule into its final position or when the shaft bottoms out in the bore of the club. And again, to do this, grab the, uh, the head with one hand and hold the shaft about a foot down from the top of the hosel. And while holding the shaft tightly on the head, just drive the butt of the uh, shaft against the floor or a, a metal plate works well too. And you want to continue this process until you can feel